<laughs> hey guys, this is First Top from Game Dexterity. So I got a really awesome PS2 tutorial today. It's probably one of my most favorite PS2 tutorials ever. And the reason I say that is because I spent all morning setting this up. Bottom line is today I'm going to show you proof of my desktop PC and my netbook. They're both connected to a router. That router is now connected to my PS2 Slim. And the beauty of this is the PS2 Slim is soft modded with Freemake Boot and it has OPL version 0.8. So what that means is I have a USB hard drive connected to my desktop PC. The PS2 is able to play the game stored on my desktop PC that is on the USB hard drive or internal hard drive. Likewise, I have a laptop that's connected through a router that's connected to the PS2 Slim and the PS2 Slim is able to play games that is stored on the laptop or games that is stored on a USB hard drive that is also connected to the laptop. Sounds confusing? Don't worry, I got a video of, um, of this, uh, this whole setup very shortly in this video tutorial. Now this video tutorial is going to be a very long, most likely, and I'll try to go this, through this as cleanly as possible because there's a lot of small technical details and I don't want to miss it. So, if a long video um, turns you off, I'm sorry. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with the whole PS2 and the modding and FMCB and all this stuff, please watch my other PS2 tutorials and then come back and watch this one. So sorry for the long intro, let's get to the meat of the discussion today. So if you go to the opl.sksapps.com, they have a user guide of everything you want to know about OPL version 0.8 and today we're going to do this formatting and installing the network but I already did that so I am going to ask you guys to go ahead read through this whole website and learn how to do this stuff now I do have other video tutorials that already cover the subject so I'm not going to talk about how to install a game how to format your hard drive all that stuff I'm not going to do that today now I do want to talk about some little um, tips and tricks that I figured out today on my own so what I have right now this is a external hard drive partition. It's technically, I think it's like 40 megabytes, not 40 megabytes, 40 gigabytes. But what I did is I used USB Extreme. So here's the USB Extreme program. I said disk format, format. I selected my partition and it formatted that bad boy. Likewise, I then used the games installer. If I point it to my M partition, here are the two games that are installed using the UL format, using the USB Extreme. But I do have one more game that is inside the DVD folder, which is an ISO, Okami. So that's going to be really awesome, and I'll show that on the TV much later. So one of the things we want to do first, and I know I know this sounds very confusing, and I'll try to walk you guys through these steps as slowly as possible. I'm using Windows 7, so if you're using Windows XP, please adjust yourself accordingly. See the more info section, I do have a link to my blog article that talks about this whole thing as well. So if I were to right click on my partition, or if you had all your stuff stored on a, in a folder, right click the folder, but in this case I'm right clicking the partition and I'm going to properties. And then I go to sharing, and then I say advanced sharing, and I say share this folder. And I'm going to give it, give it a name, PS2 SMB. And now I say permissions. And now I'm going to say allow for everybody. Click apply. Click OK. Click apply again, I guess. Click OK. Close. So that's it. And if I were to refresh, here's the sharing sign. OK. So that's half the battle. The next half of the battle is setting up a static IP address. Now remember, and this is a pretty unique setup I got going on right now. My desktop PC is connected to a standalone router. It's actually connected to two routers, technically. I'm connected to a wireless router, and I'm connected to a, a, a hard router in my room. And it makes more sense in the video footage. So let's go to network um, connections. Sorry, network and sharing center. And I'm connected to these two networks right now. This is my wireless network, and this is my um, second router setup that I'm connected to right now. Now, what I want you guys to do is let's click on change advanced sharing settings and click on home or work and just follow these settings please so bottom line is just make sure you have turn off password protection sharing in the home network or or work and then in the public network do the same thing just in case to be on the safe side everything else you can leave it on just like I have on here and you'll be okay I doubt it anyone's gonna come and hack into your house or into your network as you're playing your PS2 game so don't worry about that alright so and then click on save changes so that's the first part the second part is and I should not have closed that window let me go back to it guys sorry if I go to change adapter settings I want to set a static IP address from my PC here and I did this on my laptop as well but I'll show you proof of that later on. So let's go to properties. This is my local air connection. So I'm using just a regular CAT5 Ethernet cable. It's connected from my desktop PC to the router. So I click on right click, go to properties, and then I go to 
TCP IP v4, click on properties, and this is what I did. I said use the following IP address. And I said 192.168.04, something that mask, and then this default gateway. Now, I got a lot of flack about this in, in my older PS2 videos. Your default gateway IP address is going to vary, okay? So, how do you know what your gateway IP address is? If you bring up the command prompt, and then you type in IP config and press enter, and find your network interface. And this is right here. Ethernet. Okay, so here's the network interface. Okay, so my g default gateway is 192.168.0.1, and that's what I copy into here. Why do we want to do a static IP address? It's just easier that way. So if you have multiple devices connected to the router, you know that your IP will never change. Otherwise, if you don't turn on static IP address, your router will always be issuing a um, they call it a DHCP command. So sometimes it's possible that your PC, laptop, PS2, whatever may get a different IP address. So it's always better to use static IP addresses. So bottom line, summary, my desktop is set up to use a point four address here. Your computer, you can use whatever you want. And your router may say 192.168.1.1. That's OK. If that is the case, and you change this from a 1 here, and you change this to a 1 here, and you press OK. But for my tutorial, my gateway IP is 192.168.0.1. And just I think you can follow just as long as you understand the concept here. Okay. Likewise, let's go into my laptop. So I actually got TeamViewer up. So let me tunnel into my laptop and show you guys what I did on my laptop connection. So I can just talk about it right now. Now the laptop is also doing the same thing. He's sharing a his own USB hard drive. It has a PS2 SMB network share. Permissions is everyone. So if I click on his laptop connection on Ethernet, go to properties, and then I go to IPv4, go to properties. See, this is what I did for my laptop. So this second device is a 0 0.5. Everything else is the same. So that's pretty much it. And then um, I think that's it. So let me kill out of that. So before we go into the real vo video footage, uh, as a recap, what I've did so far is one, I have a PS2 folder or I have a partition that has all my PS2 games on here. One thing that I do want to know, and I had some issues with this this morning, is if you have your hard drive format as pure NTFS, technically you should be able to share a game folder. I was not able to do that for whatever reason, and it still bugs me to this day. However, if you have a partition format as FAT32, or if you use a USB Extreme program and format the partition, and then install your games to it, the network will work flawlessly. Yep you will not have any issues and if you do leave a comment and I'll get back to you with some help on that second thing is I shared the folder so remember that I shared it as PS2 SMB the third thing is we went to network uh, connections and then we turn off that password protected folder thing and then the last option there is I set up a static IP address so if any of that is confusing there is no shame in rewinding the video and watch it again and again until it's clear in your head and like I said I'm using Windows 7 64 bit so using Vista or Windows XP address accordingly or see the more info section I do have a link to a blog article I wrote a very long time ago so with that said let's jump into the video tutorial I think you guys are gonna like it it's gonna be awesome this is the best I've ever done so let's do this alright guys so before I put my camera on the tripod let me show you the setup right here so what I have is here's my PS2 Slim and it has no games okay there's no games connected to it here's my FMCB a memory card that I exploited already and here on the back side is the Ethernet cable this Ethernet cable is going to this router right here so there's three cables on the back of this router this cable is going to my PS2, this cable is going to my laptop, and this cable, this black one, is going to my desktop PC. If you guys don't believe it, I'll trace the wires very shortly here. Here is a USB hard drive. USB hard drive is connected to this netbook right here that's on top of this um, canister. And then here is the Ethernet cable that I was talking about that's connected to the router. And here's the black cable. And this black cable, if I trace it all the way, it goes over here to the back of my desktop PC. Likewise, here is my external hard drive that's connected to the desktop, and this is what we're using to connect to the router today in which the PS2 will be able to play uh, games off the, the network here. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is let me put this camcorder on the tripod and then I'll show you some living proof. It's gonna be awesome. 
All right, so let's rock and roll. So what I'm going to do right now is let me turn on the TV and turn on the PS2. And then it's going to boot into the FMCB here, like so. And let me lower the volume a little bit. Okay. So let's go down to OPL version 0.8. See my other PS2 videos? You have no idea how to install these programs. I'm not going to go over it right now. Sorry. Now, what we're going to do, and I'll tell you what buttons to press here, is if I press the start button, that takes you to settings. Go down to network config and press X. Okay, now, it might be hard to read, but here is what it says. For my PS2, the IP address is 192.168.0.10. The mask is 255.255.255.0. The gateway is 192.168.0.1. That's just the gateway IP address on my router. Your router might be different, so you might have to say 192.168.1.1 as an example. Alright, PC IP port 192.168.0.4. So we're going to do a test with my desktop PC, and then later I'll show you guys proof of using my laptop. So, and then you leave all this other stuff alone, press OK, so press X, and then click on Save Changes, press X, and you're good to go. Press Circle, press Start, now we press left and left until you get to Network Games, and press X. What it's going to do now is going to ping my PS2 and also my PC, my desktop PC, and if everything is set up correctly, you have a list of games. So right now I have three games installed. So someone asked, hey, does GTA San Andreas work on network? So here's your living proof. So let's start the game. And I'll just show you guys real briefly that, yeah, the game works. The FMVs are awesome. There's no lag. And the game is flawless. It's very smooth. It's almost as if you're playing off a real disc, you know. And I'll show you guys proof of that very shortly here. Once I get done with the GTA, I'll show you how to use the in-game reset with OPL. It's very cool. Basically, you can tell your uh, PlayStation to reset itself while you're inside the game. Or you can also turn off the PS2 with your controller. So let me see if I can skip all this stuff. Now, OPL is a very powerful program. I suggest you read the website. There's a way for you to save your PS2 save games to a virtual memory card that is stored on like a USB thumb drive or your USB hard drive. Very cool stuff. If you guys want to see that, let me know and I'll do another tutorial on that in the future. Now, this game will take a, a while to load only because there's a lot of, you know, loading screens and stuff like that. So if this video is long, I apologize in advance. You are more than welcome to skip ahead a couple seconds if you don't want to see all of this. Okay, sweet. So I'm just going to let it play through the video very quickly here. Come on. And look, there's no lag. It's very smooth. If your game lags, then I suggest you defrag your hard drive and life will be good. So, and then let me press X, skip that video sequence. Let's get into the real game itself and let's have this guy, you know, run around. You know? Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah! Okay, so in-game reset. How you do it is you press and hold the top four buttons and then press select and start. And if your game is compatible, the PS2 will basically restart itself. Pretty cool, right? And some games are not compatible. I don't know if this game is compatible, so let me do a, a hard reset. But if you go to the OPL website, there is a link where you can see what games are compatible with the in-game reset. But I just want to talk about that feature real quick there. So, let's go down to OPL version 0.8. And I'm going to change the IP address just to show proof that, hey, this does work with my laptop, which is using a USB hard drive. Some people may say, oh, versatile, that's sort of unnecessary. We understand the concept. But I only want to do this video once, and I want to do it the best I can, and... The more examples I can show you guys, maybe that somehow relates to your life, you know? So that's why I'm doing this. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I go down to PC. Let's change this to the IP address on my laptop. Press X, change it to 5, for example. And then press X on OK. Save changes. Press circle. And then press start. Press left to network games. Press X. Now it's going to pull my laptop. I only have one game installed on the laptop right now on the USB hard drive, and that's Okami. So it should show up in this list momentarily here. 
All right, sorry about that. I had to momentarily pause the video because my laptop network cable got loose. So anyways, here's the laptop. It's connected to a USB hard drive. Only got one game installed, Okami. And let me just show you guys proof of, yeah, it does work. So if this seems a little bit complicated, trust me, it gets easier over time. Hopefully you see the setup so you have a better understanding of how everything works together. Now most people, they only use one device, but some people want to use two or three. It, technically using the crossover cable is the easiest way but the router method is another method that works and if you have the tools by all means go ahead and use it so let's skip through some of this network stuff here the beginning stuff press start yeah new game whatever now not every single game is compatible with OPL um, with the USB or SMB so you just have to play it by ear there are a bunch of compatibility lists online so go ahead and take a look at those too now I'm not gonna waste your guys time playing through this a little bit but we can clearly see that the game works out fine I'm sorry if this tutorial is a little bit long but it's just the only way to make sure that I get everything covered and if you still have any other questions Leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you like this type of video, please like, share, and subscribe so that hopefully one day we can get on the front page of YouTube. So once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.